Hey everyone, so uh, this is going to be a little demonstration of the virtual grower software that you're going to be using in your lab this week. So it is free to download. I have the link included on your worksheet. If you guys have any trouble with it, let me know. But I wanted to put this together. Instead of writing out instructions, I think this would be an easier uh, way for you guys to see what exactly you're going to be doing and how to use this software. So this virtual grower is a greenhouse simulator. So you're able to input all these values for your greenhouse, such as location, greenhouse design, heating system, etc. And from all of that, you can get different outputs that provide you some information. So uh, it will tell you your heating costs based on where you're located, what material you're using on your greenhouse, what kind of heating system you're using and schedule. If you're using artificial lighting, it would give you your lighting costs. And it provides some information on uh, planting and when you may want to start your plants based on your greenhouse setup. So it's kind of a, tool, a cool little tool for you guys to explore. Um, we could go more in depth with it. Uh, if I had more information on the actual greenhouse at school, we could actually input those values. Uh, but I need to figure that out beforehand. So we're just going to do some um, uh, kind of random setups and see how it all works. So I figured I'd work through the first scenario in your lab to get you started. And from there, you should be set up to complete the rest of the lab. So if you pull up your first scenario, you see uh, it brings up a bunch of information on what the greenhouse is. And as we read through it, I'm going to work it on the virtual grow, right? So to start out, it has your greenhouse is located in Millville, New Jersey. So if you see here on the virtual grower, one of the first things you can do up here on the left is set the location. So you pull that up and you can do that in different ways. You can type in a zip code or you can go by city and state. So we'll do that. And now this thing isn't, uh, it has a lot, I think it's up to 800 cities. It's not, you know, extremely comprehensive, but it has good enough uh, information on cities. So there's Millville right there. And then what this does is it sets the location of our hypothetical uh, greenhouse and it uses uh, temperature records or um, estimated temperature records based on past data of what you would expect the temperature to be each day uh, in that location. And that's what you see up here. It also looks about it looks at uh, daily light integral. And this is something that we're going to learn about next week. So I'm going to stay away from the lighting portion of this for now. Uh, but after next week, you will have a better understanding of what this is and some more information on that. So we set our location, and then the next step is to look at your actual greenhouse design. So you would go next to this greenhouse design, and you're going to add a new greenhouse. If you wanted to, to, you could name your greenhouse right up here. But it starts with the overall structure. And if you come back over to your uh, lab here, it says that we are doing a Quonset style or the greenhouse or that hoop house. So how you do that here in uh, this virtual grower is that you see here we have different roof shapes that we can do. We have our triangular, which is more of your like gable roof greenhouse. But if you come down here and you select arch, that has something that's starting to resemble your Quonset style or your hoop house. And then all you need to do is drop down your side heights to zero, right? So if you look, we are going to have no sides. It's basically just the roof extending to the bottom. And when we do that, it makes it look very similar to our hoop house, right? So that's the first step. We have our hoop house, and we say that it is 100 feet long and 25 feet wide. So we already have that inputted. We don't need to change that. And the height of the roof is 13 feet. Perfect. We are set. Uh, we don't need to worry about knee walls. This is more for... Um, Knee walls are essentially uh, like extensions almost of the foundation, and they would be brick or concrete that rises up. So that would affect the um, length of your transparent material on the sides. We're not going to worry about that. We have no knee walls for our greenhouse. So there we go. We got the structure set up. And now we're going to look at what are the materials. So if you go over to this next spot, you have, you see that we are a greenhouse. We have different materials that we can use for the roof or the walls or the sidewalls. And it, we can change it up for all these different ones. For us, they're all going to be the same. And we're going to start 
by saying that our roof and walls are covered in polyethylene, right? That's that plastic material. So if you click, you're going to click on polyethylene for all of these, like so. Right, so now we have our material structure. Now we're going to take a look at the air infiltration. We could say, um, this says whether there are gaps in your structure. So we're going to say there are no large gaps, but we have a few small gaps in our covering that have appeared. Right, And we'll say we also have an outside air intake right here. And then this allows for a lot of customization. Um, if you had, if your greenhouse, maybe like at school, if our greenhouse is a part of a building, you could uh, input that and you could say whether your, um, these parts of your greenhouse are insulated or not. For us, we are gonna say all of this is part of a separate building. We have a standalone greenhouse uh, like so. And then lastly, uh, there is no energy curtain. So you go over to this part up here. An energy curtain is essentially a shade curtain that you can put over your greenhouse. If it starts to get uh, too warm where you're located, it'll help keep the temperatures down. Uh, we are not going to have an energy curtain on our greenhouse. So that is the basic setup of your greenhouse design. And then next, we are going to look at heating, right? So it says your greenhouse has forced air unit heaters located above bench that run on natural gas. So we come over here to heating. And we're going to start by looking at the heating system setup, so up here. And then it gives us the options. So we have unit heaters, which are already selected. We say they are delivered as forced air, and they are located above bench. So you don't have to change anything, right? Your options here, could they could be above bench or below bench, or you could have tubes running above or below the bench. We just have separate unit heaters that are located essentially on the top of our greenhouse and are heating through forced air through fuel type up here, natural gas, right? So you don't really have to change much. And then we also have powered ventilation. So don't have to change anything with your heating system set up for now. Later on, you will have to change it to high efficiency unit heaters. That's about all we're getting into. But if you wanna play around with this later, once you're done with your lab, you see you do have other options here that uh, you can look at and give you some ideas of how, uh, if you were interested in building a greenhouse or modifying it, if you went for these different heating types, how it may affect your heating costs later on. So for now, that is all set. Next, we're gonna look at our heating schedule, right? So it says your, we have our greenhouse is forced air, is powered ventilation. The heating schedule is a constant temperature throughout the year set to 70, that should be set to, or I guess set at would work as well. Set to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so here's our heating schedule. You can give a name for it. Again, we'll just keep it default heating schedule. The start date and the stop date. So January 1st ends December 31st. So that's the entire year that this is going to be. We say that is a constant temperature. So we want our greenhouse to be a constant temperature throughout the year. You have different options. You could have no heating system. You could have a different temperature for day and night. And you can specify when... Uh, the start of the day is as opposed to the start of the night, where you can get really uh, in depth and have different hourly temperatures. For us, we're starting pretty easy. We say we want our greenhouse to be constant temperature, and that constant temperature is going to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Right? So we set that. And that should be good for temperature, right? So now we have our heating system, we have our heating schedule. We say we are not having any sort of artificial lighting, but if you um, wanted to play around with this, this is uh, the setup. Again, it's very similar to your heating setup. You could look at the different types of lighting that you can do. This right here is photon flux uh, density, I believe that unit, right? Um, we will, again, be looking at this next lecture, so it may be a little foreign to you right now, but it's a measure of photons that are important for photosynthesis of plants. And as we'll learn next week, that's an important measure that we want to look at when we are comparing lighting systems. Anyway, you can go into, you can look at different types of lights, uh, lighting systems, etc. We will not be... Um, 
dealing with this right uh, now. So for, for our lab, we're not going to be doing any sort of lighting and we don't have to worry about a lighting schedule. And then the last thing that we can do with this virtual grower, and as you see in your lab, is that in your greenhouse, you're growing African violet, flowering tobacco, lobelia, and zinnia. So this thing has a list of plants and it provides information on those plants. So you would add a new plant list and there you can name your plant list and all the plants available in this program come up. And then when you click on them, it provides a picture of them and a little bit of information on them uh, right here, right? Scientific name, uh, cultivar, their photo period, whether they respond, essentially whether flowering, whether they flower with different uh, day lengths. Uh, we'll learn about that in plant science. For you guys who had plant science, uh, you'll know what that is. Optimum temperatures for flowering and starting size, etc. So it gives you some information on each. And then what we can do in this is we can add them to our uh, hypothetical planting list. So in our greenhouse here, we're growing African violet, so we would add it. We're also going to grow flowering tobacco. So you come down here and there's flowering tobacco. We add that. Lobelia. So you come down. And again, each time you click on this, it gives a little picture and information. And then we are also growing zinnias. It's all going to be down here. All right, so you add that to your plant list. And with all of this, these are essentially the greenhouse design, all the inputs that you could put out or put into this software. And then now we're finally gonna get to our outputs. All right, so we have our greenhouse designed, we have the plants that we're growing, and now we're gonna look at some of the outputs that this uh, virtual grower provides for us. So the first thing, the first question I have is, what is the yearly heating cost for your greenhouse? So we went here to outputs, we have our greenhouse number one selected, we have our heating system selected, that's, again, if we named it, it would have a different name. We need to click on it, right there to show that we're selecting our heating schedule that we talked about. We don't have any lighting system, but we do, we are growing plants, right? So you come down here, you need to select plant list number one, and that should be our plants that we listed. And then we're gonna go over to this tab and we're gonna look at costs. And again, you have to select your greenhouse. And if you hit calculate output, it's gonna provide you a breakdown of monthly heating costs as well as an overall cost that you see down here, right? So based on uh, this information to answer this question number one, our yearly heating costs are gonna be $32,880.14. And again, you can break it down by month here. And then if you go all the way down, it provides you your total right here as well. As part of this, it provides a little more information, right? Your heating costs per square feet, and then what are the monthly low temperatures for each uh, for each month, right? Obviously, if you look at this, if you break this down, your heating costs are increasing during these winter months when it's colder, right? We have our lower monthly lows. Now, if we had a lighting system, it would also provide information on our lighting costs as well. So uh, a handy little tool here, Get a, if we were uh, in a greenhouse business, right, nursery business, and we had this, uh, we can get an estimate of how much it's going to cost to be maintaining, at least maintaining the heat of our greenhouse if we had this constant temperature. Now, we can also use this to uh, give us a little information on starting our plants. So if you look at question two, we have, if you want your flowering tobacco to be ready for sale on May 1st, on what date should you start them? So that is where we can use this predictions forecast tab. So we come down here, we go to predictions and forecasts. And then what this does, make sure you select your greenhouse, is you come up here and this is the date that you want your plants finished by, right? So in this case, this would be the date you want them ready for sale. So you can change the date and in ours, it is May 1st, right? And then from that, you hit calculate start dates. And then based on our heating schedule and the, um, the relative temperatures and the greenhouse design, it will provide you an approximate start date for when you may want to start your plants and when they will be ready for a certain development level and ready for sale or ready or finished, right? So if you look here, you have each plant that is on our plant list, an approximate start date, 
and then it provides you a little bit of more information weighed at flowering it doesn't have any notes for them but we are interested in the start date so if we were going to grow our flowering tobacco in this greenhouse and we want it ready for sale by may 1st we'd want to start it based on this information and based on this program by march 26th right so that would be your answer there so that's the, that's the setup, right? It's fairly easy. You just put in different inputs for your design and it provides you different outputs. So um, in the next couple scenarios that you guys have to do yourselves, uh, you will have to change uh, different aspects of the greenhouse. So you have to change the greenhouse covering here. Um, you have to change the heating schedule, etc. So just again, to show you without going through the actual lab that you have to do, say you want to change your heating system, you come up over here, all you do is go back to this heating tab and okay, we're going to do a hot water boiler, right? And maybe we're going to run it through water in tubes below the bench, all right? And that would be hot water pipes. Oh. Uh, we'll do it below bench like that. There we go. So that's a system where instead of heating the air in the whole greenhouse, we are running water pipes below the benches and we're heating our plants that way, right? With some bottom heat. So that would be something that you can change. Um, that's all you have to do to change it. Again, to change plants, if you have your plant list, you can remove plants like so. Um changing our greenhouse design, all you do, uh, you could come back here. Uh, you won't have to do any of this because we're only sticking with this hoop house. But say we want to change our material. Instead of polyethylene, we're going to do a polycarbonate triple wall, right? All you do is rechange these uh, inputs, and then that automatically changes that. When you go back to your outputs, it's going to provide you um, different values for everything, right? So you can click on that, calculate this, and now we have different heating costs, right? Because we've changed our heating system and we've changed um, our uh, material that's covering our greenhouse. And then the last thing that you may have to do is you may need to change your heating schedule. So instead of a constant temperature, uh, you may need to do a day and night temperature, right? And again, you can change what your day temperature is up here. Instead of 65, we can set it at 75. We can say our night temperature will keep at 50 degrees. We could change when we when our day starts, right? So at 6 a.m. is when this is heating system is going to kick on to bump up our day temperatures to 75. And maybe at 6 p.m. is when we are, can drop our temperatures to 50, et cetera. If we wanted to get really in-depth, we could have hourly temperatures like such. So that's it. Uh, that is a little tutorial on this thing. If you guys have any questions when you're working through your lab, just let me know. But hopefully uh, this is kind of a fun little thing for you guys to play around with. Uh, that is it. I will talk to you guys next time.